this cat really rocks. Only shooting stars break the everybody and welcome to Brawl Stars. I'm Amy the Amazonian and today I'm playing with Roxanne, Starfall 7th. Roxanne is a man of rocks commander, but only the rocks that happen to also be tokens. When she enters the battlefield or attacks, she makes a meteorite. Normally a meteorite, by the way, is a five mana card. It enters untapped, but it does the exact same thing. It taps one mana of any color and it deals two damage to any target. Because Roxanne makes one of these when she enters the battlefield or attacks, if you give her haste, it's very easy for her to refund her own mana cost. And she even has another ability that can help with ramp even more. If you have a token that can tap for mana that's an artifact, she makes it add an extra mana, which means these meteorites, so long as Roxanne is in play, tap for two. And the same thing applies for treasures. So this deck has a whole bunch of treasures in it. It also has a couple things that help give Roxanne haste and lots of good early ramp because we have a five mana commander and we want her on the battlefield as soon as possible. Like most gruel ramp decks, we've got a bunch of big sweet cards up on the top end and a lot of ramp down here in the middle. Also some of my favorite cards that help prevent counter spells like Rhythm of the Wild and Domri and Arc of Bolas. You can actually put even more haste enablers in this deck if you really want to rely on Roxanne or if you just want to give haste to all the other big stuff in this deck. I also tried to add a little bit of a sub theme of those treasure tokens and things that have a bit of an enter the battlefield ability for their ramp. Uh, this is only for artifacts or creatures entering the battlefield. This does not work for landfall, but Panharmonicon is still a great card to have when it comes to Crater Hoof Behemoths, Voren Uh Primeval Titans, Kogel, Kogel and Yadaro, Atali. There's so many of these cards that get even better when you start doubling up their enter the battlefield abilities. And of course, Roxanne's one of them too. You might think that Oh, it's a five mana four three. How hard could that be? Well, she might die easily, but she kills a lot of things. These meteorites entering the battlefield and doing two damage can add up. And if you have something like Panharmonicon out, you aren't just getting two of the meteorites. Each of the meteorites is going to be doing two damage twice, which means that if you have Roxanne and Panharmonicon out, you're really going to rock your opponent's world. And by rock their world, I mean deal so much damage and do so much ramp. I really have had a lot of fun with Roxanne. So we're going to take her into the queue and we're going to start throwing stones. Kellen the Kid. Kellen the Kid cares about casting things from exile. I have a little bit of ramp in this hand, but it starts on turn three. So I'm going to mulligan and I like this a lot more. We've got some mana rocks. We've got a... Armored Scrap Gorger, this is both Graveyard Hate. And by the way, Kellen does care about casting things from outside of hand. So including things like flashback in front of the graveyard. So being able to exile from the graveyard is pretty good. This means early Roxanne, and I like that. Uh, I got an Arcane Signet. We'll use the Signet to play the Kami. We'll use the Kami to get the extra forest into play. And ramp has occurred. I would have rather had this Kami down on turn one, but I'll take I'll take this. This is pretty good. If I draw land, we can bring out Roxanne. And then we can start throwing stones. Oof, they have ramped very hard. And this Kellen is able to destroy our mana rocks. But we'll just have to destroy their ramp first. Since we have no counter spells, I'm going to actually prioritize this Incubation Druid over the Delighted Halfling. That also leaves me able to attack for one. Yeah, we, we got a lot of Kellens now. In this deck, you can't run any of the other Kellens. Oh no, you could run the Selesnia Kellen in this deck. Uh, he also, by the way, works with adventures. Pretty nice. Hmm. I want to make sure I'm using up this meteorite while Roxanne's still in play. I'm going to get down Iron Crag. Play Essica's Chariot. This is able to duplicate the meteorite token. Swing in with Roxanne. I'm going to uh, rock this delighted halfling. Sweet, they take the hit. Here comes the Scrap Gorger. So now we've got a lot of mana. He's each tap for two, so long as Roxanne is out. Ooh, yeah, so there's a, there's a little bit of flashback. Oh, but we've destroyed their mana? And we're gonna have so many meteorites. No way to catch up from that. Early ramp can win some games. GG. 
Magda the Horde Master. Whenever you commit a crime, you get a tapped token, but only once per turn. That does count, though, for your turn and your opponent's turn. Because I think their deck is going to be pretty aggressive, I'm actually going to keep this hand. Now, this hand doesn't have ramp, but it has two very good pieces of removal. We've got this Method's Enthusiasm and Obliterating Bolt. Woo! And they have a free way to commit a crime every turn. This is actually so smart. Scrabbling Claws. Target player committing a crime exiles a card from their graveyard. So right now, you know what they can do? They can commit a crime. They're not even going to wait until I start casting spells because they know that if I have a chance to, I'm killing Magda. And I am. Bye, Magda. Since I used Method's Enthusiasm and it did 2 excess damage, the next creature I cast will get 2 extra power. Uh, I'm not going to be able to line that up on Dawer Kaslam, but if I could, I would because she cares about power. Ooh, Magda's back. And doing crimes. Now, do I want to ramp this turn? Getting at this Topiary Stomper. Oh, I played the wrong land. Yeah, we're, we're just going to be obliterating Bolting. I think I might actually next turn use Kogla and Yodaro's uh, discard, draw, destroy an artifact ability to get rid of these because I they keep committing crimes. Oh, hey, Koth. You're pretty strong. I'm a little worried about this Koth. Uh, he's got removal stapled to the number of mountains. This can have haste if I keep it in hand. I think I'm going to go for the ramp. So this Topiary Stomper can't attack, but it does get me more mana. And more mana means Kogla and Yudaro. This is a 7-7 seven, seven that can have Trample and Haste, which does mean I have the potential to swing it at Koth and take him out. I don't really want to play Roxanne so long as they're able to use this Minus ability. Okay, and by take him out, I mean he has a plus two ability. So bring him to one loyalty. do my best also big creatures tend to be pretty good against mono red since it's hard for them to destroy them electro dominance four damage to the topiary stomper goodbye my beautiful dino benoid and they cast a seize the spoils for free discarding and drawing two and making a treasure you think the cat <laughs> is coughing up meteorites like a hairball i think it's supposed to be her digging them up also i I think Roxanne, based on her name and just how she looks, is from New Capena, but she also kind of has this vibe of being from the Unfinity set. It's it's very strange. I, I don't know if this cat with her uh, long, beautiful hair is from one or the other. Yeah, she's also, she's kind of spacey. She ain't a space case. Mana acquired, and the ape dinosaur turtle is in play. What if she's from the upcoming sci-fi set? You think that there's just going to be uh, cat women out there? I don't... So some of the cats on New Capena did have a little bit of hair, but not as big as this. None of them have, like, a big, huge mane like this. That's why I, I just don't know for her. Anyway, here's a, here's a big old ape dinosaur turtle. They're going to get some more treasures. They're going to get some more mountains. That could just be her hair. Yeah, could be. Kind of like our commander. It's really easy for her to refund her mana cost. Uh, I'm going to commit a crime this turn. The crime of throwing a rock at Magda so she can't block. Cat boys in space. I would love more cat boys in space. Are you going to lightning bolt Roxanne? I thought about playing the land first for heroic intervention. I am now protected. Gonna take this cough out so I don't have to worry about him. 
And I can replay Roxanne, but I don't have like haste or anything here. So I'd rather just sit, chill, vibe. I'm not gonna play the Magda. Her art is great. Yeah, I love her big chicken too. Also love she has like a bit of a hip thrust, like, yeah, check out my rock. I think it, I think the flavor is her just digging those up. Magda's back. Koth is very easy to ult. But uh doing a crime and getting that treasure doesn't save you from my dinosaur ape turtle or my cat who's throwing rocks. GG Magda. Reaches the blast maker. Reaches, uh, <laughs> It's cool. You cast the second spell in a turn, you sacrifice an artifact, and then you have the chance to either copy that spell or deal damage. But you don't get to choose which happens because Breaches flips a coin. Uh, I think that Breaches is a very cute commander, a little chaotic, and plays nicely with a lot of Is It Burn cards. Uh, which also means that I'm probably going to have some dead commander happening. And I accept this. Uh, I don't have any use for this this turn, so I'll just play it. Uh, I could go for Pock. Probably not. I think it's going to be a Rhythm of the Wild turn. Nice. Rhythm of the Wild lets me give things haste and uncounterable. This does have blue, so I do have to be mindful of counter spells. But now my creatures can't be countered, which is huge because our deck is mostly creatures. One, two, three mana. If they don't kill the Elvish Mystic, we can get out Roxanne and attack with her this turn, which means dealing four damage to probably breaches. Uh, this is why Roxanne is so scary with haste. We get her out. We swing in. We throw another rock, and she just made four more mana for next turn, assuming she's still alive. Now she dies to a lightning bolt, but... It doesn't matter. The damage has been done. Inti, Seneschal of the Sun. Inti allows you to discard and draw, but it's an impulse draw, and get plus one, plus one counters and trample on your attacking creatures. All in all, a very good aggressive commander that also triggers on other forms of discard. So if your opponent is forcing you to discard, then you can get extra impulse draws. Uh, I'm a little concerned about like doing the fetch into a shock because this is a very aggressive commander. But I do want to have the maximum amount of fixing early on in this game until we can get Roxanne out and start spitting out these meteorites. And there goes the Lanor Elf. Always bolt the bird, always stalk the elf. I don't have any more plays until Nylia here, and Nylia can't attack or block. She's just a discount. Is Inti about to come into play? Yes, he is. We're gonna have the turn, not the turn timber, the timber crown pathway. And Lelia, nice, gives them an impulse draw when she attacks in. And each time a card goes into exile from Inti or Lelia's ability, she's going to get bigger. Ever growing threats, the Akum Hellhound. Ooh, can't come down this turn, neither can Raid of Bombardment. But that's a lot of damage and it's going to keep on growing. Hmm. I think playing the Panharmonicon here is the right move. So Panharmonicon, I mentioned this in the intro, is incredibly good with Roxanne because it triggers for both her and the tokens. If this is still around at the end of my turn, in the start of my turn, this doesn't get abraded, we could do some serious work. Now they could steal my abrade here since Robber of the Rich is going to exile off the top. They do get the impulse draws. They drop a land and get... Another land. They already played a land for turn, though. And Glorybringer won't be able to play that. They actually did get Artifact and Enchantment removal, but it's not one that they can use since you have to discard it from hand. Problem? I only have three life left. Cavern of Souls. Doesn't really matter what we name. I will name Druid because that is my commander's type. And we are going to play Roxanne. We're going to get two Meteorites. And each of them is going to deal four damage. So I'm going to hit the Robber of the Rich and Lelia. And then I'm going to hit Lelia two more times. Lelia getting trample from Inti. And if I kill Inti, they can just replay him, is what I'm most afraid of. I think that there's also a very high chance that they can just kill Roxanne here. 
And then they have lethal. Because Inti can give himself trample. That also works. Alright, so they've got the Defiler. They've got Inti here. Phoenix check. Okay, so that's one damage to my face. They can put the uh, extra damage onto the Phoenix check, or they could just give Inti plus one plus one and trample. Either way, I am dead here. But I think we did a remarkably good job, considering that we played a mana, a mana dork, it died, and then we did nothing for four turns. GG, Inti. Vaco, Death's Doorkeeper. Vaco is pretty scary because he can reanimate creatures. So he turns them into one one spirits. In order to reanimate using Vaco, you have to sacrifice a non-spirit, have the card you want in your graveyard, you put it into your hand, and then you cast it for all of one mana, which means that they'll need sacrifice fodder, they'll need some self-mill discard or entomb effects, and then they're ready to go. Uh, I think the nastiest thing I've done with Vaco is cast Ulamog on turn three. Sure, it was 1-1 one, one Ulamog, but it still exiled two of my opponent's lands, which is a problem. We're also doing nasty business now because I have a Ragavan here. He's gonna swing in. Yeah, they put a causal deck in their graveyard. Um, I could go Signet, uh, Ruby into Signet, Signet into Ruby. Somber Wild Sage gets me the pure, just most mana, but it's also the most, most easy to stomp. Somber Wild Sage. It's three mana only for creatures, but guess what? Creature, 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 creature. Playing Vico here and block the Ragavan. But if they do block the Ragavan, ideally I can just, like, throw a rock at him. Doesn't have haste. Nothing to give him haste here, hopefully. Oh, nice. Castle Garenbrig. I am going to start by swinging in with Ragavan. Because you blocked. I've got access. Throwing stones. I, I actually just realized I could have played the Arcane Signet. I had, like, already planned out my turn before I drew the land. Oops. That's fine. We don't need more ramp. <laughs> I have a Somberwald Sage out. Turn two Somberwald Sage is nasty. That's how you get out, like, turn three uh, Atalias in a Atalia deck. Roxanne, you can keep throwing stones. Nope, she's getting exiled. Ooh, Lightning Bolt. That also kills their commander. That's really helpful. I still have enough mana to replay Roxanne. Now, I've got all this other really good stuff. But, like... I don't live in a glass house. I can throw all the stones I want. Meow, meow. Roxanne's pretty scary. Bones Malone out here, getting the fifth mana, sort of. This Mox Amber current can't currently tap for anything. They're de-sparking Roxanne. Okay, that's fair. Well, now we'll start playing all the other threats that we have in hand. Maybe. Maybe. I, I still have enough mana for Roxanne. This is incredibly... T yeah, you know what? Fine. Uh, Guardian of Nubanalia, by the way, is really nice with Vaco because you can use it to discard the cards you want to reanimate. Just keep chucking those rocks. They technically have more lands than me. Let's see if they discard something. Make her indestructible. They do. Oh, she's so good in sealed. If you can get her to stick around... Even just once gets you that mana. Okay, uh, we have this lightning bolt, and I am not hesitating for even a second to use it. This time, by the way, we untap with Roxanne, which means that each of these is going to tap for double the mana. I am going to start spitting out loads of spooky creatures here, like uh, Orcaslam. Hmm, maybe a face breaker. Got a stomp or two, so I can finally get a fourth land. We swing in, we get another rock, we hit the guardian, we win the game. It's nice having removal built into your commander. GG. Tamio, field researcher. 
cameo is, well, a proliferate commander. Not really how the deck is designed, but because she has such a powerful ultimate ability, you oftentimes play lots of ramp and ways to protect her, board wipes and counter spells, so you can get to her minus seven ability and then cast lots of powerful spells for the low, low cost of free. I think that Tamiyo is tricky. Tricky to play against. We thankfully do have like some ramp. We have removal that can hit her. We'll see how they play. Have I tried building around Lila? I have not. Uh, I'm not really sure how I would build Lila. That's one of the, the new Is It cards, right? She looked cool. Her art's definitely cool. Ooh, somebody is getting a land. See, there's a proliferate card. Uh, my creatures will now enter tapped, which, rude, first of all. Second of all, super rude. Third of all, incredibly rude. If I get one of my haste enablers, I might want to use this Besaju. Hmm. Okay. I'm just going to get four damage in. I can fetch this next turn. Obliterating Bolt, the removal I have in my hand, is a sorcery. Oh, somebody's ramping, getting the midnight clock out. Ding bong, ding dong. Crack open this wooded foothills. Gonna grab a mountain. Now, I could play Roxanne here, and she would get me a rocks. And that's very nice. So I'll do that, uh, hoping that it's not a board wipe in my future. I also thought about going for Vorinclex. We also get our treasure from the Gallagreeters, but both of these are tapped, so we can't use them right away for something like Tameo Safekeeping. I'm actually like a lot more interested in protecting something like Vorinclex or Primeval Titan because like, to me, that that is just a much, much bigger thing. I can just keep replaying Roxanne. Oh, you bounced my meteorite! Teferi, I don't think you realize the pain that you're about to have inflicted upon you. I make sure I'm leaving the land specifically back for this. By the way, the treasure taps for two. Oh, how thrilling. Let's go for a Cavern of Souls because counter spells are real and they can hurt you. And a Creature Land, Lair of the Hydra. I am going to name Druid, since that's my commander. It's also a bunch of other things in this deck. Almost all the mana dorks are Druids. Swing it face. Free rock. Throw the rocket to fairy. Oh, Lila was the multicolored spell support card. Yeah, I don't think she has that much in Arena to really be built around because she's only in two colors. And as far as is it spells go, like there are some interesting two colored spells for is it. There's just a lot more interesting cards that are in more colors. So that can proliferate. Ooh, Spiteful Banditry is fun too. And Harmonicon, Vorin collects. I do have the ability to protect one of these. As long as I'm leaving up some mana here, I'm pretty happy. For Horn Clex. I'm not playing the Panharmonicon yet. Get a plus one, plus one counter. Yeah, I know it's tapped. I'm just gonna grab basic forest because that's all we have left as far as forests go. Play one, go to combat, swing, swing, swing. We're gonna throw a rock at the Canker Bloom. They can sacrifice it in response if they had mana, but they don't have mana. We get two more lands. These ones come into play. Let's go with Castle Embereth and some good fixing. Rockfall Veil. Yeah, I don't have that many tech lands in this deck. It's like I could have lined up for a uh, more lethal attack if I had bolted that, animated a land like Lair of the Hydra too. 
But right now, we have, like, triple their mana. They did not find many lands. They tried to draw. They even tutor for lands. And they haven't played Tamio yet. I know. She's just a cat who digs up a rock, throws it at somebody, and then goes finds another rock. Hi, Kiora. Can untap that for two mana. I imagine they've been sitting on a white, but they haven't been able to use it. They would have they would have had to do it right there. I'll just swing in with everything. Go for it, cuties. Then they could have fog. There is a fog in these colors. Two mana. Let's click on whatever's over here. Great. There we go. So that's a root snare. But something notable, this only prevents combat damage. So I'm going to do something kind of weird here. Uh, I am going to use Spiteful Banditry to kill my own commander. Some of you see where this is going. We can play her again. Ooh, can we ever? I think I even have enough for the Panharmonicon, too, to get lethal. Yes, we do. I did the math right. Love it. Eat rocks, Tamio. We have <laughs> we have a lot of rocks. <laughs> GG. Thalia and the Gitrog monster. Thalia and the Gitrog monster make it so your non-basic lands and... Your creatures are gonna be coming in tapped. Which is very rude. I want mine to come in untapped. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thankfully, some of these come in tapped anyway. All right, so we have Shatter Skull Smashing. That is a fourth land. So I'm actually going to keep this on top uh, because maybe next turn I'm not doing anything. But the turn after that, we got Nihilio. Then we can get Roxanne. And all of that would be really great to have. Arboreal Grazer, protect me. Because Thalion the Gitrog monster is, I will say, just a very, very good commander, it gets built in a lot of different ways. Uh, I've seen this as a Planeswalker supporting commander. I've seen it as Death and Taxes because it does have a bit of a Staxy Taxy ability here. Uh, I've also seen it as, like, more of an Aristocrats or a Land Recycling deck. Incredibly good card that can be played in many different ways. Bringing out Nylia. Uh, she is an indestructible enchantment, so she's just going to chill back here until we get enough devotion to start attacking with her. And there's Thalia and the Gitrog monster. Nylia is making our stuff cost less, so we're going to use that to get out Roxanne and throw a rock. Die, Esper Sentinel. Now I feel a lot more comfortable casting things like the boots and the, the braid and all of this. Hi, Vorinclex. Gets them to... Forest. They don't have to be basic for us. And since they can play extra lands each turn, they could probably throw some of those down this turn. They already played one land, but like, maybe they don't have anything to do. They'll play at the Entrium. Ooh, no, a Mystic. Must throw rocks. Need to throw rocks. They sacrifice the land to draw a card. Ooh, Domri! Domri's going to increase power. Um, green, green, red. I want to uh, go for the safekeeping, abrade everything else maneuver here. So I'm going to attack with Roxanne. Hit the Elvish Mystic. Three damage to Vorinclex. Indestructible on Roxanne. And now we're going to use the fact that she's still indestructible to kill Thalion the Gitrog monster. A perfect cleanup by the kitty cat. We're also now up to four devotion. Thank you, Nylia. They got an ambitious farm hand. That's ambitious. 
gets them a plains, puts it in hand. What if they'll play the tap land? This or a different land? Okay, so they've got four mana now. Siege Rhino! You know, when in Abzan, do as Abzan does, right? That's a Siege Rhino if ever there were one. Since we have all of the mana in the world, though, uh, it's hoofing time. Swing in. Throw a rock. Win the game? I don't... Yeah, yeah, that, that looks right. Slightly over lethal. GG. The Gitrog, Ravenous Ride. Gitrog is a very aggressive new Gruul commander. You hear me say that with a bit of a wince because Gitrog will kill you and its own riders and get a lot of ramp while it's doing that. It's a five mana six five with trample and haste. Like just on its own, that thing is kicking your butt. But it also has this crazy good sacrifice ability that lets you draw cards and put lands into play. It's really, really nice. Uh, I am going to do my best, though, to have a very good start because we have a turn one Ragavan. We have a ton of, like, one-drop plays in this deck between ramps and Ragavan and lightning bolts, all that kind of stuff. Do I have anything to boost my rock's damage in this deck? I do not. Uh, I think Sulfim is probably what I would run to increase my non-combat damage uh, because it, it has to be for um, just all non-combat damage sources. It, it doesn't work if it's just for red sources since she's red, but the rocks aren't. Ooh. Swing in. They block. They do. Did I see the Cowboy Bebop Magic the Gathering thing that dropped? Yes, I did see that animation. It was very cool. Yeah, I think the new Gitrog is strong. I think it's the kind of card that's... Uh... I I'm not entirely sure how I want to brew it, but I do want to brew it. Also, I don't know how the Gitrog monster got here. It wandered through an omen path and people started riding it. Listen, Thalia riding it? Those were extenuating circumstances. Why is everybody else riding the Gitrog monster? Is Thalia okay? You don't have to eat the rider. Is it frog time? No, I hear Kaslam. Okay, here she is. Ready to rock and roll. I could... I probably could, could have gone for Pock and doubling the land. I was actually thinking, like, Goblini? Roxanne! Rox. Anne. Roxanne what? Roxanne. Oh, what Cowboy Bebop thing? So... Magic Japan always has the coolest promo things. They posted a, um, in the intro to Cowboy Bebop, Tank reanimated with Oko, Vraska, Tiny Bones, and, um, Rakdos. It's really great. Yes, they posted this, uh, on YouTube last night. I love Cowboy Bebop. That's a pretty good hit. They got a land. They got Augur of Autumn. Vraska! Vraska, you going to destroy Roxanne? Two mana Pock. Pock champ. So I'm going to play Pock because he's only two mana! Uh, I think we go for Kogla and Yudaro. Or do I want to go for Roxanne? No, Kogla and Yudaro. Mm, but Roxanne. Ooh, but Amy, Roxanne, the ramp. I'm going to go for Roxanne because it lets the meteorite tap for two. I'm going to bot Braska so she can't kill another thing. And I'm going to use the two mana to play the meteor, or uh, from the meteorite to play Delina, so I can start copying Roxanne while I attack in. Whoa! 
Well, it worked. The uh, the double discount on all our creatures from Nyla and Goblin and Archomancer was just great. GG. Trotta, deadly fugitive, hitting you with assassins to steal the top cards of your deck, but face down as two twos that are cloaked. You can, though, pay four mana to flip it face up or cast it if it happens to be not a permanent. Uh, the only thing that Atrata really doesn't work that well with is, unfortunately, Planeswalkers, because they get turned face up as permanents, have no loyalty, and immediately die. It it's tragic. At least I think it's tragic. Wait for his bobble, gets them a little bit of ramp. Got the spiteful banditry here. Lightning bolt if I need it. Yeah, I think they're just going to be ramping this turn. Ooh, I can ramp too. I've got a Domri. Domri's also really nice because he can make my counters, uh, my creatures uncounterable. So they're going to throw that back on top of my deck. That is completely fair. Hi, Atrada. They tapped out for this. And uh, I am actually thinking that I'm going to use Domri this turn to kill Atrada. Uh, I could go Spiteful Banditry into Lightning Bolt, but I think that landing this while they're tapped out is really important. But actually, I'm going to try attacking first. Do you let the damage go through? Okay, they let it go through. I figured I should just try to get the free damage in. Uh, we bop it. And bap it. No more Atrata. Admittedly, Atrata's only dealing one damage at a time, but I don't want them stealing the cards in my deck because we are a gruel ramp deck. And that means that there is a chance that they, off the top of our deck, hit something huge. Hit something like Ulamog because he's in the deck. And then flip it over for just four mana. Or like... Atali, Atali, like, you wouldn't get the enter the battlefield from Atrata, but still, same thing. We plus. Gotta get that uncounterable. You like my pet rock? Thank you. Just like Roxanne, it rocks! Are they gonna kill her? <laughs> I think they're gonna kill her. <laughs> they firmly grasp Roxanne. Uh, she goes to the command zone, but we still get our cool rock! And I get to deal two damage to their face. Die! They'll do some ramping with the Wayfarer's Bobble. And now we've got enough mana that Spiteful Banditry will be able to take out their commander, because we can do, um, two mana, plus one, two, three, and then a fourth from Domri if I don't draw a land. What a cool rock. Its name is Dwayne. Dwayne, why aren't you jiggling? Dwayne, are you okay? I'm clicking on Dwayne right now, and he's not moving. <gasps> I think I killed my pet rock. Ooh, is this a reanimating lily? It is. Okay, there's nothing to reanimate, though. Uh, we plus. I think spiteful for two is just fine, since it gets me a treasure token. I'm trying to decide if I want to shove aside the Liliana here, or if I want to save this. Yeah, I just want to reduce her uh, her loyalty in case they can get something really good into the graveyard. Dwayne! Dwayne! Usually he jiggles a little when you click him and he's not jiggling! I can't believe I killed my pet rock. I didn't even know you could do that! Tragic. Ooh, something bit big got put in there. Dream Shackle Dice. Oh, that's a tappy one. I've had that in a Spirits deck before. Maybe it's sleeping. Oh! What? What? Oh my god, the drama! You guys, he's back! <laughs> what is happening? He is risen! My son is alive! 
<laughs> so I'd love to play Roxanne to keep ramping here. I'm just gonna go for a Tolly though. Uh, crack it open this treasure because this can get me um, up to three different threats. A Tolly is a threat. He's a seven seven. Uh, if we steal something that's not a creature, they might be able to counter it. That's okay too. Uh, also, I think they might just kill a Tolly here. Yeah, rippy peppies. Let's see what else we get. Uh, on my end, it looks like Methods Enthusiasm, and on their end, Warkite Marauder. Okay, Warkite Marauder's pretty good. Uh, I have a feeling they're going to sacrifice the Malevolent Hermit to prevent me from killing Liliana. Thank you for the treasure. These treasures off Spiteful Banshee, if we can get Roxanne out, are very good. So this Warkite Marauder um, is pretty cool because it gets rid of abilities when it attacks in. So it's pretty much guaranteed to have a clear fight path, unless they get like multiple flyers, things with reach, anything along those. He fell asleep because I'm playing against a Demir deck. I mean, at least this Demir deck is like, it's got a Trotta. I haven't seen any other assassins yet, but that's okay. There's not that many good assassins in Arena. I, I get it. They could play the Malevolent Hermit as a flyer. I would just be able to remove its abilities. Ah, Ralph the Llama! They give it the 14-month resub! Yee and ha! Samri takes the two. Ooh, Cavern of Souls, named Druid. Woof no is not lethal here. Shy is kind of nice. I want the Roxanne. I'm going to hit the Liliana. I'm going to finish the Liliana using the Warkite Marauder. And I can block one thing if Roxanne survives the turn. Author's note, she did not survive the turn. I have a feeling they're going to kill Dom right here. They might do the two zombies at Dom right and then just a trot at face to steal the top card. Now we don't know what the top card is. It is a mystery! But they have enough mana to flip it up. I, I think they'll play the Hermit if they don't want to flip it up, though. Or, or something else from their hand. Maybe even hold Counterspell mana. I can only make my uh, Commander uncounterable. Tempted by the Ring makes her really hard for me to block. Armory is very killable. Wow, just like the story. With one mana up, two to block. Just got 10, 11 damage. It's not enough to kill them with the hoof. must resist continuing to play Roxanne. But Amy, why resist? She keeps making more rocks! I'm gonna eat this at the zombie. Ooh, you know, I should have attacked in first so I could kill a Trotta. Because I just, I just remembered I could turn her into a zero one and then I could have thrown the rock at her. I forgot because this is not my card. I was just thinking, I should kill something so I can get two more mana off a treasure. Will they remo run out of removal? I don't think they will, because that's a Yawgmoth's Vile Offering, and they have uh, offered up the Satali. Fire Kaslam, that's a good card. 
Delver of Secrets? Also not bad. Yeah, if I had gotten rid of that, um, I would have been able to prevent them from casting the Yawgmoth's Vile Offering. Misplay on my part, guess what? It happens. Ow, ow, oof. They have cloaked another card from my deck. Um, okay. If I animate the Lair of the Hydra for one, these get an extra two damage. It forces them to block, but it's not fully lethal. We hit the thing with the highest toughness. Danger. Uh, Auric Haslam, by the way, this is not a May ability. If she dies, she's coming back over here. Under its owner's control, I'm the owner. It was my crater hoof behemoth, Mr. Krabs. He was number one. Watch this be something that they just turn up, they turn face up and it kills me. Yay, it's ramp! Okay, everybody's swinging in. What is the face down card? Can it kill me? Or are you taking an extra turn? There's a lot of things that could end this game right here. Also, I like that my friend is a uh, wild card. Or wild in. Oh yeah, if you ever want to check who the owner of a card is in Arena for the point of, like, flipping them, if you right-click on it, it will show you the owner if it is not the person controlling it. Alright, I have... Roxanne is able to, to throw a rock. And then we have this. Roxanne's uncounterable. But if they have a kill spell... And that would do it. Now, they, they had an opportunity to play a flyer, and they didn't do it. They didn't play this Malevolent Hermit. I, admittedly, I'd be able to make it not a flyer, because that's how it is when it attacks in. But we'll see. Is this game? Cyclonic Rift back into their hands! Well, you know, I tried. The Atali is going to be what kills me. Swinging in with more damage than I can prevent. I'll, I'll prevent as much as I can. I'll, I'll throw this in front of Atali. Oh, what a beautiful game. GG, wish I, wish I had fought ahead and killed that Atrada on that one turn. Didn't, doesn't matter. A good back and forth. I love to see it. Tameshi, Reality Architect. Tameshi is going to be a bunch of artifacts and enchantments that help control the board. You're able to get them back from the graveyard, so if you use them up, that's good and fine. Only have two mana here, but hopefully I will be able to draw another land so we can start with the Scrap Gorger and start getting landfall triggers off the Tireless Provisioner. Or Hawk. Perfect! Love it when you just draw the third land. Hello there, Armored Scrap Gorger. You, you Scrap Gorgeous. Playing this, getting a fresh treasure. And hopefully I can save some treasures because Roxanne doubles the mana from them if she's out. But I'm still happy to have this out this early. Draw another land, perhaps? A land, milady? Not a land, milady. Um, or your chasm's definitely the strongest thing, but also has the benefit of 
if it dies, it turns into a land. So I'm still getting some ramp. I could have also done Rising of the Day here to try and just get my creatures hitting their face. I want I want Aura Chasm on the board. They ramped, sort of. No, they didn't go for ramp. They uh they got the crowbar. That's adorable. Chromatic sphere. I could remove one of these, but they'd be able to bring it back pretty easily. I think that I want to play Pox first. Because I think that dealing four damage means that we are going to hit at least one land. Dealing two damage, pretty good chance we'll hit a land. Yeah, I was like, I don't think they're going to block with the citizen too. Maybe they will, but they didn't. All right, so we got we got both. That's great. Uh, we got a creature, not a big one, but still a good creature. A land, the land gets doubled. Doubling the land gets us double the provisioner triggers. And now that we have Pock and all your Chasm on the battlefield at the same time, we have a really, really stupid combo. If Oyer Kaslam dies, she actually comes back as her front face. And a land. It, it, it's one of these, like, if they destroy both of them at the same time, this doesn't work. But if they just kill Kaslam with Pock on the battlefield, it gets silly. All right, so they're destroying Rising of the Day. That is very fair. Die. A clue, a clue. Yeah, so we just get this back as the uh, backside. Still fine with me. It's time to toss rocks. Meow, meow. I'll probably end up drawing a card. Gave me a clue, I should use it. Hi, Tameshi. Tameshi can bring back Mindstone Sphere Crowbar. Yeah, because it's, it's X and white. Putting a land back in hand. Ooh, Kogla and Yadaro. I could fight Tameshi. I could also just, like, throw a rock at Temeji. I like doing both of these things. Mind stone. Yeah, I do wonder if they have something, um... That, like, an exile here. I'm gonna fight Temeji. Bonk! Smashing, by the way, also works with bounce spells. If you bounce your opponent's stuff into their hand, wildly enough, you still get to draw a card. The, I mentioned mostly just the second part of the ability. Whenever one or more non-creature permanents are returned to hand, whose hand doesn't matter, draw a card. Ooh, cure best the sea gods, and I can't destroy that, but I can draw a card. Give some trample. Hope for the best. I would have loved some Rample. I don't have any Rample. I'm gonna crack open my Mind Stone. Gonna lose my mind. Ooh, Panharmonicon. Yes. And also, yes. The rock comes in and it's going to deal four damage instead of just two. They go two, two. All of these, by the way, are going to be tapped. Tap and stay tapped. <sighs> She's tapped after she flippy. What do you think they'll steal? I'm just wondering, like, am I about to get farewelled? Oh, sip duel! She's still a four five. Could be worse. They got themselves a one one, and because of the way this is ordered, it lost trample because the sub duel came down after the uprising, I believe. 
stealing a Roxanne because otherwise she would kill them. That's fair. Picking out Delina because she could high roll. Also fair. Something else in their hand also just got the uh, binding ability. Oh, oh, Prismatic Vista. Going to one. I guess the difference between one and two here isn't that high. Ghostly Prison taking out my haste enabler, Rhythm of the Wild. This is not what I need. And now everything I have is a one one. Or in this case, a negative one one. Unfortunately, I already used my Beseju, so, uh, yeah. About that. Can I have my commander back? Can I draw my lightning bolt off the top of my deck? We haven't used it, right? <clears throat> These are lands. <gasps> oh, it's a treasure! Oh, and I'm dead. Oh, dang. So close. Get so far away. Gretchen Titch Willow. They're usually a Simic Flash commander, getting lands into play whenever you have a little bit of extra mana and drawing cards too. Uh, I have a very nice turn one here since I have this Utopia Sprawl to get myself some red mana so I can bring out things like Ragavan, Ruby, Mind Stone, all of this next turn. Nice Llanowar Elf. I'm gonna start with Ruby because she can generate more, uh, more mana here. And then I could go for the monkey. I could even dash it out, but I'd rather play the Ares Elysian Caryatid, because this means I'll have one, two, three, four, five mana, just enough for Roxanne. You know what Roxanne does? She throws rocks. If I can get her down before they have a counter spell, that is ideal. A boom. Rocks have been thrown. You've heard about bolting the bird, smelting the elf. I don't know what we're doing. But it's pretty great. Tireless Provisioner also dies to a meteorite. But Gretchen might do some blocking. Ooh, Primeval Titan, huh? Hmm. 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 I think I'm going to go for Rising of the Day. Nylia. <laughs> Ragavan! Let's have some fun! We have a lot of creatures, and technically only two lands. Have I ever made a Yorian deck? Yes, but I preferred Lazelle. This level of ramp is illegal? You haven't seen nothing yet. Primeval Titan, grab me some more lands. I'm not gonna get fancy with this, by the way. I'm just gonna grab like whatever duels I see here. Uh, that is sure, whatever. We throw the rock. Yeah, yeah, whatever, lands. Uh... This at. Don't care, kill! Yes! Lethal damage! And an extra 11 or so in the mix, too. GG, Gretchen.
Thank you so much for watching this episode of Brawl Star. Roxanne really does rock. If you're looking to grab my deck list, it's in the description of the video. And if you'd like to suggest a commander, a bunch of people suggested this one, please let me know. I'm trying to brew as many of the new Thunder Junction commanders as I can. Some of them don't really work out as well in Arena as they do in paper, but I'll still do my best. Uh, this is a really fun deck to play. I think that the uh, Gruul aggro strategy is already one of my favorites, but having this super strong enter the battlefield ramp is even better especially when you have her hasting out uh because then you can even be pretty like sacrificable with her you can say like oh i'm attacking into this big creature but that's okay because i got this these two extra mana rocks because maybe i'm just ramping into something big next turn maybe i just need this mana right now for something even better than my commander uh i think roxanne is pretty darn strong and with things like parallel lives panormonicon um, and Essica's Chariot doing extra work with those tokens, you can do a lot of really silly stuff. I, I definitely enjoyed getting to copy tokens and the token enter the battlefields while playing Roxanne. Thank you all so much for watching, and have a brutal day!